Hey guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new low profile ice tower cooler for the Raspberry Pi 3 or the Raspberry Pi 4. If you're not familiar with the original version, I have one set up here on a Raspberry Pi 4. This is a 4GB model. These coolers work with any operating system that you want to install on your Raspberry Pi. There's no drivers required whatsoever, it's just kind of a plug and play cooler. But it is the best cooler that I've ever tested for any single board computer. But now we have a different version. It's the low profile ice tower cooler coming in a little cheaper than the original ice tower, but we should get a smaller form factor with this installed. So in this video, I'm going to do a quick unboxing. We'll assemble the unit and then we'll run it through its paces. So here it is. Inside of the box, you're going to get a full illustrated manual on how to assemble this. It's really easy to do. This works with the Raspberry Pi 3, 3B Plus, and the Raspberry Pi 4. Next up, you're going to get all the hardware you need along with some thermal pads and a new bracketing system. Now with the original Ice Tower cooler, it came with two brackets, one for the Raspberry Pi 3 and one for the Raspberry Pi 4, but now this works on both. Plus, with this new version, you're going to receive a bottom acrylic plate. This didn't come with my original Ice Tower cooler, and I'm not sure if they've included it since then, but this will make the whole unit a bit taller. We'll test it with it and without. And here's the new cooler. It's definitely a lot smaller than the original Ice Tower cooler, but this will still add some bulk to your Raspberry Pi. I have yet to find a case that this will fit inside of, but they do include that acrylic bottom plate, so you really don't need a case. You can leave this open air. So straight out of the box, there's definitely a lot less material here than the original Ice Tower cooler, and I don't think this one's going to cool as good as the original, but this should handle pretty much anything we throw at it, even overclocked to 2.1 GHz. So with this setup, we do have those dual copper pipes just like the original, but the heatsink assembly itself is much smaller. Overall, it's a nice little design, and I'm sure it's going to keep your Raspberry Pi super cool. Like I showed you, it comes with full color instructions. It's actually really simple to do. It comes with the screwdriver you need and this new bracketing system, which works with the original Raspberry Pi 3, 3B Plus, and the Raspberry Pi 4. And the first thing we need to do is attach the bracketing system to the heatsink itself. You need to make sure you have these in the correct orientation. Everything you need to know is in that manual. They're going to attach to the aluminum heatsink base with two of the included screws. And the way this is going to attach to the Raspberry Pi is through the mounting holes on the Pi itself using some of these standoffs that are included. You're just going to put a standoff in each hole on the bracket and we're going to tighten it down with a nut on the very top. Once we have those in place, we're ready to mount it to the Raspberry Pi, but don't forget to use thermal paste or the included thermal pads to place on the CPU itself. I'm going to be using one of the included thermal pads, but if you have any good thermal paste laying around, you could use a little dab of that. It does have a protective film on it, but I usually leave mine on because this acrylic gets really scratched up. I don't think it looks bad like it is. So for the final step, we need to install the heatsink on the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm just going to place it here, make sure it's in the correct orientation. And from the very bottom, we're going to use four more of the standoffs to screw into the standoffs that we already used on the bracketing system. But really, if you don't want to add this acrylic plate, you could just use four of the screws to hold the heatsink to the Pi. And once we're done, we'll have something that looks like this. Keep in mind, this is the Raspberry Pi 4, so we have those dual HDMI outputs on the side here. Overall, I think it looks pretty good, but with the acrylic base installed, it's not that much smaller than the original Ice Tower cooler, and I really wanted this to be much smaller, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that base and just give it another comparison. In my opinion, this is much better with that base removed. We just have a much shorter profile on the whole setup here. It's a lot shorter than the original Ice Tower cooler, and I think we'll still get some really good performance out of it. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, it does have an RGB fan built in. Now this could be swapped out for pretty much any two pin fan that you want to put on here. 40 millimeter is the size of this one here, but it's nice and quiet and I think it looks pretty decent. So with this all set up, let's get into some testing. And just to give you a quick rundown on my testing method, I have the CPU clock up here. We're at the stock clocks of 1.5 gigahertz. I will do a stress test at 2.1 by the end here. Over here, I'm recording my temperature in the background. I'm going to get 40 readouts in 20 minutes, 35, 34. I'm going to test the idle temperature. I'm just going to let it sit. We're going to test out some YouTube video playback. We'll do five minutes at 720p. I'm also going to run an extraction test on a 1.1 gigabyte file, and then we'll do an extreme test. I'm going to max out all four cores for 20 minutes straight and see if we hit that thermal throttle. 
And by the way, I have set my thermal limit from 70 degrees to 80 degrees just in case we get any higher than that, but I don't think we'll ever hit 70 with this cooler on it. So let me go ahead. It's going to take me a while to test this out and I'll get back with some charts. So I'm back after what felt like forever for me. The ambient room temperature is 74 degrees Fahrenheit. All of these temperatures will be listed in Celsius. Idle temp of the Pi 4 with no heat sink, 51 degrees Celsius. The Flirt case, which is a non-actively cooled aluminum heat sink, 36 degrees Celsius. The low profile ice tower cooler that we're looking at in this video, 32 degrees Celsius. And the original ice tower came in at 30 degrees Celsius. So going into this, I was pretty sure the original ice tower would cool better, but we're still doing really good with the low profile version. And for my final extreme test, 20 minutes, maxed out all four cores. Within three minutes, no heat sink hit 80 degrees Celsius, which is the thermal throttle here. The Flirt case managed 61, the low profile ice tower 48, and the ice tower was 42. So overall, even the Flirt case will keep you out of that thermal throttle limit if you're not overclocked. Now when overclocking to 2.1 gigahertz, that Flirt case can still hit 80 degrees Celsius within this test range of 20 minutes. But if you're doing normal tasks, it should be fine. All right, so I also wanted to test this with an overclock. I'm maxed out here. The highest clock I can get out of this Raspberry Pi is 2.147 gigahertz. That's a pretty awesome overclock for a little single board computer. We're almost there. We got a few minutes left. We're sitting at 54 degrees Celsius. All four cores are totally maxed out here. Let's give it a little time and see how this thing finishes up. We started at 34 degrees Celsius with the overclock going, and it's actually still going in the background. We ended at 54 degrees Celsius. 20 minutes with all four cores maxed out at 100% is definitely an extreme test, and not a lot of people are going to do this with their Pi. But it's awesome to see that this cooler will handle it. So there you have it. The new low profile ice tower cooler for the Raspberry Pi 4 definitely performs well. It's not as good as the original ice tower cooler, but we do have a much lower profile, especially with that acrylic base remove. But in the end, it's really up to you. There are other ways to cool your Raspberry Pi. This is definitely overkill, the original and this one here, but I'm personally into this kind of stuff. And I actually think it makes the Raspberry Pi look pretty cool with this giant heatsink on the top. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I will leave links in the description to Amazon. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.